the Catholic Current, where we give you an update on events affecting the Church in the United States. From Washington, D.C., I'm Mara Moser. Pope Francis called this week for peace in the Holy Land amid escalating violence and the ensuing humanitarian crisis. That General Army. Silence the guns, let the cry for peace of the poor, the people, the children be heard. Fratelli e sorelle, la guerra non risolve alcun problema. Brothers and sisters, war does not resolve any problems. It only sows death and destruction. Aumenta l'odio. It increases hatred, multiplies revenge. La guerra cancella il futuro. War erases the future. Cancella il futuro. It erases the future. Credenti, a prendere in questo conflitto I urge believers to take only one side in this conflict. Ma non a parole, ma con la that of peace, but not with words, but with prayer, with total dedication. Pensando a questo, ho deciso di indire venerdì 27 ottobre. Reflecting on this, I have decided to call Friday, October 27, a day of fasting, prayer, and penance to which I invite in whatever way they deem appropriate, the sisters and brothers of the various Christian denominations, people of other religions, and all those who care about the cause of world peace to join in. Cardinal Pierre Battista Pizzaballo, the Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem, similarly called on people to fast and pray this week as a way we all come together despite everything and unite collectively in prayer to deliver to God the Father our thirst for peace, justice, and reconciliation. Cardinal Pizzaballa has also offered his, quote, absolute availability to be exchanged for Israeli children taken hostage by Hamas in the October 7th attack. USCCB President Timothy P. Broglio joined Pope Francis saying, on behalf of my brother bishops in the United States, I invite all people who long for peace where there is war to join the Holy Father in fasting and acts of penance on October 27th. The bishops of the United States have launched a national mental health campaign on October 10th, which is Mental Health Day. It comes at a time when people from many nations are seeking to raise awareness and remove the stigma around issues concerning mental health. As part of the campaign, the bishops have offered a novena and mental health resources. Archbishop Boris Guziak, chairman of the Committee on Domestic Justice and Human Development, had this message to share. Please consider how the Lord may be calling you to help. For those of you who are already doing so much in your families and communities, in Catholic ministries and secular professions, I thank you for all you are doing. Finally, if you or a loved one is suffering from a mental health challenge, I want you to know we are with you. You are a beloved daughter or son of God. We are praying for you. We love you. You are welcome in the Catholic community. There is hope. Our God is a God of hope. We are a community of hope. We hope to support you as you receive the help you need. And we hope to encourage all levels of our society to redouble efforts to provide good and robust resources for everyone who needs help. As the Synod on Synodality continues in Rome, our colleagues at Catholic News Service spoke with two cardinals about their experiences. Cardinal Joseph Tobin of Newark spoke about a more inclusive church. We ask ourselves in reflecting on communion, who doesn't experience communion? Who doesn't feel welcome? Who doesn't feel like the gifts they've been given can be laid at the feet of Christ in the church? because they're not wanted. Whose gifts have not yet been recognized? And so as we are a listening church, I think the challenge is to be also a seeing church, but seeing the members, our sisters and brothers for whom they are, not with some sort of schematic tomb that we've constructed out of, out of a lot of principles and then rolled a rock in front of to keep. The rock's been rolled away. And so now we're trying to look with humble and clear eyes 
at the gifts that have been given to the church because the mission that we have to witness to Christ today is so important. Cardinal Blaise Supich said that the Synod is advancing the place of women in the church. The voices of women are being heard in this uh, assembly of the Synod and uh, I think that is a paradigm uh, shift for us in the re rest of the church to make sure that their voices are heard. Really what it takes is not that we hold up women uh, in, in a different way than, than men, but that we also recognize uh, that uh, each of us has the ability because of our baptism uh, to stand in front of the community and speak our mind. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Catholic Current. You can find out more about any of this week's topics by visiting us online at usccb.org or follow us on social media at USCCB. I'm Mara Moser. See you next week.